Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Adam with ND72. So if you remember my previous videos, maybe the last one or the one before that, somewhere around there I took my SL55 out to do some 60 to 130 pulls. They went from comical, from adding a 92 millimeter ported snout, uh, throttle body setup, we gained a half a second in 60 to 130, but then we broke something. So what we broke is, if you remember, my supercharger bearing. So today we're gonna be doing a video of how to replace it. I'm gonna try to give as much detail as I could to people, that way you can do it at home because it's something that saves you a lot of money because these effing factory superchargers, if, you, if you're doing crank only boost and all that stuff, the pulleys are not cheap, but you could just rebuild the, the pulley bearing for relatively cheap. Mine, getting it here within a day because I wanted it effing fast, cost me $60. They're on eBay, they're online, all this, a lot of places have them brand new for about $45 to $50. So you don't need to pay the extra money. And the bearing, is right here. So you can literally search M113K bearing and blah, 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 but it's gonna be, I cannot pronounce this word, N-I-C-H-I bearings, okay? And this is the number on the bottom of it, so hopefully that all works out. Let's see if it'll focus. There you go. Uh, let me see. And this says, this, literally it says, this bearing is measured to, so on and so forth, so forth, bearing in the OEM Mercedes pulley. It will not fit aftermarket. It literally tells you all on my package. So I know I got the right one. If you could read, I don't know. Did I got upside down? Nope. Blah, 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 blah. All bearing information. So we're going to be pulling my bearing off. I'm going to put it in the press. Now, you could probably do this with just like a hammer and a block of wood or whatever. But the press I use is a Harbor Freight press. They are stupidly inexpensive. Like, I think I got mine on sale for under 100 effing bucks. And I've used it a crap load of times. Not just on this car. But it helps you replace other stuff like certain like control arms. You don't need the whole control arm. You just buy the bushings. And they're so thin, these presses. Just go buy one. So I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, if you are old school and you just want to use like a block of wood and like a hammer, go right ahead. But you might damage the bearing. So that's all on you. But I'm going to show you how to, I do it with a press in my home garage in the underscore 72's headquarters. So we're going to start pulling it apart. I'm going to try to show you as much detail as I can on this. So you can do it at home. If I forget anything, please just ask a question. Throw a comment down, message me on Instagram at BuffyCLK500, and I'm gonna say this again. Please do not show up to my house. It is awkward as crap when, I sh when someone shows up to my house, I have dogs on the property, and you never really know, so do not show up to my house. Message me, and if I don't get back to you right away, I will not get annoyed if you re-message me again, because sometimes I get like 20 messages a day from Instagram, I try to answer all my comments on YouTube, but sometimes on Instagram, I get 20 messages from guys asking me random car questions or girls asking just to hang out with me. It's very annoying. So if you do ask me a car question or something like that, that is 100% okay. If I don't reply, just keep asking me. Eventually, it'll keep popping up to the top of my stuff, and I'll reply to you. All right, let's get to the car. Okay, stop everything you're doing. Take your bearing, go put it in the freezer. Trust me, do it right now. It's going to help you out later. Okay, you're gonna start removing the belt. You're gonna need a 17 inch wrench. Okay, box wrench, so on and so forth. Put the wrench on there. Very effing easy. Take your strong arm, pull it back, slide belt forward. And then you just shimmy your belt off. Okay, you got your nice fancy supercharger belt now. And you throw that to the edge. We'll pick up that later. Take your wrench out, throw it to the edge too. Sorry for the sound. Next the fan. So I have an SL55. I have to remove my fan. Now if you have an E55 or anything like that, there's a couple other tricks to do it, but more or less kind of all the same. There's another trick where you lift the motor up from the motor mounts. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to see if I can just pull this fan out and get right to it. So I can put my handy dandy flashlight on my magnet in my supercharger and it makes a nice little work light. Look at that bad girl. Okay, so right. Let's see if I can get even a view right oh wait maybe that light is not that good that there we go there we go so right here is a 10 mil to take this fan out so we're going to take that 10 mil out we're going to move these snorkels and do it on each side and then go to there okay so now that you got your bolts out which were 10 mils you see these hoses you could pop them out of the way and just follow this cord straight down there i don't even think you could see but straight over here is your plug so pull your plug out okay now that you got your plug out this should just pull right up and just wiggle it all right, I don't have to do two hands to wiggle it out of the way of everything, but just give it a good wiggle. Okay, so the fan was kind of being particular, so I just dropped it down a little bit, and now I got my handy-dandy impact gun with a 24 millimeter socket. So you see I can get right in there. I'm just going to whiz this bad girl off. 
Now you can put a whole bracket and bracing and all that stuff, but I just like doing it this way. Cause that bad girl comes right out. It smells like poop. <laughs> so now that we put that to the side, oh, this pulley is gonna be a little bit of a bitch. So right over here is the little washer. So I'm gonna go, since this bearing's already trashed, I'm gonna take a pry bar and pry it out. Now when you're doing this, be careful. There are a couple dowel pins, but oops, see, didn't even need the hammer. Came right out, all fancy. So we're gonna put that to the side. I don't know if you can see right here, here are your dowel pins. I'll give you a better look later, but I'll make sure they didn't twist. And yeah, one did, for whatever reason. So, ooh. now my supercharger came right out. There's washers on here. I'm gonna leave the washers because we're not changing anything like that. But you could actually see how bad this, look at this bad girl. I'm literally missing all the cover and it looks like a few bearings. So that was definitely my noise. Everything else looks pretty good. So now we're gonna start pulling this thing apart. Okay, so as you see, my stuff is destroyed. So you have a C clip right here. So what you're gonna need, I just usually use screwdriver and the proper flyers. So you get these at like Harbor Freight or anything. So they're mediumly good quality. I like them just because you can click them back and forth and they go both ways. See? So, you're gonna find the two little tabs. So you see these two little tabs right there? Little ears, can you see them? They're right there and there. The gist of what you're doing is putting the tool in between there and then squeezing, and then just in case I got the screwdriver, just kind of pop it out. These are springy, so don't get hit in the face and be careful. I'm gonna try to do it on camera and give you guys a couple good angles. There we go. See how I got it out? I don't know if you can see before I let it go. Now just go slowly, put it over. I'm gonna wipe all that stuff out. Now, you would hope the bearing would just pop out. Nope, I'm gonna be going to the press, but do make a note of how far down this is. So it's basically right up against the clip. So when we push it back and we know, not bad. And we'll be pushing it out down. Now, if you can see over here, there's actually supposed to be a seal. Well, you can just hear those bearings go. Dit, dit, dit. So we'll be going to the press now. Okay, this is my cute little Harbor Freight, fits right up on the wall, press. Not that bad, it's a 12 and a half, or 12 ton press, so it should press out almost everything I did, never had a problem yet, don't effing jinx me. So, you're gonna set up your little pulley. So, here's my pulley. I'm putting it so it has enough room to drop down, and then I'm going to take a socket. You can use whatever you want for a pusher. This is a 38 millimeter socket, and it fits basically right on the bearing. And I'm just gonna pump, 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 and get it all lined up and put in. Now, while you're doing this, just take your time, be patient, line it up, triple, double check. That's what I'm going to do. And wear safety glasses. See how easy it's coming right down? That's how easy you want it to be. Now, if you feel any resistance, that might be your bearing hitting down there, which I can feel it. So I'm going to back it off and kind of readjust my stuff. my bearing out and listen to that bad girl definitely not a good sound so if you think you have a bad bearing or something up front of your supercharger check your bearing and when it blows out bad you could actually see the bearings that's how it should look on the other side so sometimes you could give it a good shake and you can tell it's bad but we're gonna basically throw that away I don't know anything I could do with that bearing and now we're gonna take our pulley which is still basically like brand new and good clean it all up Lube it up and then I'm going to show you something with the bearing I did. Okay, remember when I told you to put that bearing in the freezer? This is why. I'm going to give you a little bit of a science trick, kind of. So, when metals actually get cold and frozen, they start contracting and make it a little bit smaller. So it's easier when you're pressing stuff in. Now, if you have any trouble with it still going in, you can take your pulley and put it in your oven. And just bake it a little bit where you can take a torch and heat it up. 
but you really should be fine with just freezing your bearing. Do not put it in water. Do not do anything crazy like that. Just literally take the box, put it in your freezer, and then just let it sit. It should cool down enough in about an hour to two. You can't really damage it by leaving it in there overnight, but the longer you leave it in there, the colder it gets, the smaller it gets, easier it will be dropping. Trust me, that's gonna help you out so much, and it literally costs you zero dollars to just put it in a freezer. Watch all you do is, that's it. Okay, back to the video. Okay, so we got our freezing cold pulley. Bam. We're gonna leave the old bearing there because we're gonna use it, and then we gotta press to push it in. And if I feel any resistance, I'm gonna stop and uh, do some more cold and more heat treatment. Jeez, that dropped right in there like a glove. <laughs> See how the cold helps so much? Now we'll just finish pushing that bad girl in. Alright, now here's another little trick that we're going to do. So see how now my bearings kind of flash? I'm going to try to like show you this stuff really quick, but I don't want it to defrost too much. So you're going to go grab that socket again. Make sure you got it good height. Get it right there. Put it right on the center. And pump that bad girl in. Now just go careful. It should go in pretty easily. And you're only going in enough where you can see the ring and get it in there. So I'm gonna stop and check it and just go slow and steady with this. Looks like we're almost there, like one more effing pump. All right, so now we got the bearing all set up with the nice new bearing balls and everything. It's all looby dee 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 dee. We're gonna clean off our C clip and literally do the verse order. And if you can't get the C-clip to line up, maybe you got to put your bearing in a little bit more. So it's going to be a little bit of a trial and error. Hopefully I got it in the first time. Oh, shooter. Now just be careful. These do spring. So one thing I just did, if you see I put it all the way in, don't do that. Because <laughs> it won't bottom out. So go just the tips. Oh, jeez, potatoes though. This, wear safety glasses, wear a hard hat, wear, wear everything that protects you from not doing anything stupid. Do not do it how I'm doing it. Raw. And, ta-da! Nice. Make sure it's all good and all nice. Give it a good wipey wipe. And then now... Just verify everything, make sure it's seated in there, check your back, everything looks to be good. We're all leaving, and now you just install it right back in the car, pretty simple, hunky-dory, clean everything up. Hey guys, do you have an SLK32 or an SL55 or any car with an M11 2K or M11 3K? Then I got a product especially for you guys that you're gonna like. What we got right here is Needs Wings Modified Surge Tanks with Crossover Tubes and their fancy Dress Up Kit Hardware. This unit right here will help performance and lower boost in your cars. They make them for M11 3s and M11 2Ks. Now, this product right here is what you need if you're thinking about running stack pulleys, more boost, or almost anything. This will drop your PSI down without losing any horsepower. So you know what that means? better air intake temperatures, more actual horsepower, and safer for your motor. They bolt right up with no modifications, directly into your factory areas, allow you to actually have boost sensors back there, or run nitrous with a series of bungs. This is such a good product, and I got it on both of my cars. Now, what you might say is like, oh, that doesn't really add too much power. Well, I made a video proving it actually does. And look it, they actually make the engine bay pop and it doesn't look too crazy, it looks almost factory. So if you're thinking about what your next performance mod should be for an M113 or an M112 k motor, modified surge tanks are the way to go. Now, also, if people are still doubting their performance, I'm making a video where it's really showing how much boost drop you do with the same amount of power and, not to toot my own horn, but me, Adam at ND72, I have basically the world's fastest SLK32 in the world, 
and I'm not running a crazy pulley system. I am technically the second fastest, but the first if you don't count nitrous or meth. So, that kind of says it right there. And this car, all it really has done to it is stacked pulleys, which is a 178, a 65 millimeter, long tube headers, tuning from VTEC, and a lot of needs wings parts. But these modified surge tanks were a big part of it to keep my boost down. On my motor, it dropped at 5 PSI, same power. So my temps went way down. So what I think almost every M11K should have one of these, or you go top mounts, which I did that on my E55, but it's a lot more a lot more money. So if you're talking about money, you want to purchase one of these, you go to needswings.com. And if you want to save a little bit money, I got a 10% off coupon code for you. So you go to needswings.com, put your items in your basket, and then off the surge tanks, if you put, where'd you hear about it from? Put ND underscore 72. That'll get you 10% off surge tanks for M11 2Ks, M11 3Ks, and these cool intakes and crank pulleys for the M11 2K, and some intakes for a C32, and the list goes on. So next time you're on and next time you're on needswings.com, make sure you put anything you're purchasing, where'd you hear about us from? ND underscore 72. You'll get 10% discounts on not all their items, but some of their items, and one of them is a modified surge tank set. So, hope you guys like it. Go make some purchases, and back to the video. Now, you're literally just gonna put it all back in reverse order. You shouldn't have to mess with shims because you didn't take anything out. You're using the same pulley, same everything. Just wipe it all down, and then I'm, so it looks like someone put Teflon tape. I'm gonna put some Loctite on this nut and throw it on in there. Also, so I'm gonna torque this down, but holy crap, like, there's almost no play in this anymore. And like, no noise, that is so much better. Holy crap, now it's simple, put the fan on, and we are done ski ready for first bite rub. Vroom, 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 vroom. All right, we are out with the old and in with the new. She is looking pretty, pretty good. Now we're gonna do a fire up, check the belt, but I don't see anything really going wrong. And no more of this rattle. Wow, it is so much more quieter. Look at that bad girl just spinning her little hearty away. It sounds so much better. Let's give it a nice little rev though. All right, we're gonna do a nice little fun pull here in Mexico, and then we'll go check it all out. Focus. Right, not bad, not bad at all. All right, we're gonna do one more pull. Alright, now let's pull in and check that pulley, make sure nothing popped. Alright, we're back home. Ooh, let's pop this bad girl. Eee. All the lights making it weird colors. Alright. She is looking really effing good now. Pretty, pretty good. Let's shut it off and get a good visual. So we shut this bad girl off. Looking pretty good. What I kind of want to do is pull that belt and shake that pulley. Oh, I pretty should, should have snuck that down. All right, I got the belt off and, okay, a little hotty hot. But, oh my God, no more play. So effing quiet. Like, listen. Nothing. Pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, stripe on that bolt so I see if it backs out, but I'm going to torque it properly. But I usually like to, I torque it properly, then I drive it for a little bit, and then I make sure it doesn't back off and just check it at 80% torque. That's the way I do it. You do it your own way. 
All right, built back on cars looking pretty, pretty sweet. So just to go over with the cars, if you guys forget, a little bit of paint that just makes it look cool, but I have a VRP ported snout, 92 millimeter throttle body, my little custom cold air, ram air, air intake filter setup, primary cast delete, and then pulley setup is completely stock. It has a VTEC ECU and TCU, but the car is looking pretty, pretty, pretty sweet. So I hope you guys like this video. Hopefully that's a nice little to-do. This should be a common issue a lot of people have. Now, if you have a non-factory supercharger pulley, it's the same process to how to change it out if you need to change out that bearing. But the bearing number should be different of which one you have because clearly on my box it said not meant for aftermarket. But it bolted or slid right into mine perfectly easy. Also remember, put it in the freezer before you even start this project. Maybe like two hours. It should be good after that. And then the lube I used was just penetrating oil. You could probably put anti-seize or something else like that. But you don't want to put anything too much that's going to be too thick or too anything or help it spin more. So this lube, perfectly fine with just penetrating oil. So super happy with it. The car is feeling a lot better. No more noise. But I uh, hope you guys like it. Throw a comment down. Throw a like down. Throw down there anything else you want me to do. The SL55 or any other maintenance items you want me to try on some M113s or M112 K engines or so on and so forth because I have plenty of them. So catch you guys later.